Oh, sure, I'll read the notes. Surprised? Okay, so maybe you weren't, but I bet that there's at least one person who was surprised this chapter. If not, I can always just plead the fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth. Oh, ho, ho, it's a Dave Chappelle joke. Her, 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 her. This chapter had some obvious personal influence. Oh, no shit. Shoots and ladders, Nintendo, pasta, pomodoro, all these things came from us. I just shook my head when I saw the things that J-Pop had integrated them into the story, though. He can elaborate on these if he wants. He's the one that put them there. Okay, back to being serious. But now we've seen things that are not always what they seem. But Taka and Kana are still in the dark. They've both seen things that they probably shouldn't have, and it's certainly going to affect their actions. But we'll have to just wait and see how. The next chapter will bring be back to normal, so we'll con be continuing the timeline with Taka again. See you then. When I was thinking of my general outline for eternity, I came to realize that I needed to show Kana's feeling outside of Taka's. But it would be hard to show that if Kana wasn't saying it. It would be really hard to show Kana's feelings if I wasn't in her head explaining everything. Well, you know, in the format of a visual novel, I guess I can see that, because a visual novel is kind of, you know, first person, but... Uh, that, that's still poor writing. So I decided that somewhere along the line, there will be a chapter from Kana's point of view. Help for that idea did come from Ever-17. Another untied game. Leaving thoughts and gaps in the storyline only to be filled in later by someone else. Dude, that's that's not from that's not innovated by Ever 17, okay? Like every story ever does that. It was an easy concept to say, but it wasn't quite as easy to execute. However, I think I did no. However, I think I did it well. No, 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 J Pop. You you have done nothing well. You have done nothing well. Okay? Look, I know what it's like when you're 16 and like you basically watch or read something that greatly influences you like look I, when I played Kana I was like 14 and I got really depressed by it I was like oh my god this is so moving this is so powerful and you know what it's a long time later and I've moved on okay Kana was it was okay it wasn't the greatest thing in the world you need to let go dude I mean you're playing ever 17 so obviously you like you're not stuck in the past here but in a way, you are. You just need to move on from this story, okay? You need to move on from this story, and you need to take a writing class. Seriously, dude. Now we know how Kana has been feeling and thinking in the previous chapters. And now we see that it's not only Taka that's struggling with it, but Kana as well. Both have so many questions to ask each other. And both have so many things they want to say to each other. The next chapter will pick up with Taka and Yumi again. Who knows where they'll end up this time, or what they'll do. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Why can't you people just talk to each other? Holy shit. It's like, you know what? We don't talk to each other for a few years and suddenly it's like we can't even talk. <sighs> Man, I can't believe that I spent a whole weekend drinking and gaming and now it's come back to this. This fucking fanfic. 